Peace and blessings multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. I hope and pray everybody's having a great day today. And thank the Lord He allowed us to wake up and see another day with His precious breath of life. <clears throat> I just want to share with you some things about the Word of God that's constantly overlooked by so-called Christians okay these are things written in the Bible and actually they are requirements from God you know people always say well I'm just gonna wait on the Lord well God is waiting on us and if we waiting on the Lord and the Lord waiting on us is there gonna be any kind of progress I don't think so so, like I say, in the Bible, there are requirements. What is required of us to do while we wait on the Lord? And one of the one of those things is called the Feast of Tabernacles or in gathering, which is written in Leviticus and other places, even in the New Testament. All right. So, open up your Bibles to Leviticus twenty three. Leviticus chapter 23 and I'm going to start with verses 1 and 2 Leviticus 23 verses 1 and 2 verse 1 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord hmm now, whenever you mention Passover, whenever you mention uh, unleavened bread, or such as what we are in the middle of now, tabernacles, a lot of people might say, well, that's, that's them Jews' feasts. But what I just read to you here, the feasts of the Lord, right? And... <clears throat> these feasts is written in the Bible for us to keep okay the feast of the Lord not the feast of the Jews hmm. what do he say speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Whose feasts are they? They're the Lord's feasts. Okay? All right. Simple and plain, right? Simple and plain. The way the Lord's feast is not the Jews' feast. The Jew, the ones that call themselves Jews, they actually adopted keeping these feasts later on, because a long time ago they wasn't doing this. You know what I'm saying? A long time ago they were into straight paganism. A long time ago they were converted into this. All right, plain and simple. So now, give me one moment. Let me see something. Okay. You say concerning the feast of the Lord. Now. That was verses 1 and 2, right? I'm going to skip down to verse 33. Verse 33. And it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
speaking to the children of Israel, saying, the 15th day of this seventh month, because what month are we in now? September, right? The world says that September is the ninth month. But even when you use common sense, September, the root word for September means seven. So we are in the seventh month, according to the Lord, according to the Most High. Right? Common sense. Common sense, not so common. He said, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Ooh, do you know that most people that went to church today, because it is Sunday, most people that call themselves church folk, they, you may see them do Pentecost. And why is that? Because every year Pentecost falls on Sunday. And why is that? Because every year Pentecost means 50. And according to the scriptures, according to the Bible, you count seven Sabbaths plus one on the morrow. Saturday is the Sabbath. Plus one is what day? Sunday. And Pentecost falls on Sunday every year. So you may see some churches keeping Pentecost. But as far as a day like today, one, one, one of the feasts of ingathering, one of the days of ingathering, called Tabernacles, written in the Bible, written in the New Testament and the Old Testament, you are, you don't never see them keep that. Or should I say, you don't never see them keep this. Why is that? Hmm? It's in the Bible, right? We're supposed to be uh, followers of Christ, right? Something wrong with that picture. <laughs> Straight up. Something is definitely wrong. Now, I'm going to read on. Give me a minute. All right. Verse, verse 35. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. That's a holy gathering. All right. That's going to church. On the first day shall be a holy uh <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offer, offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto, unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no servile work therein. So, these feasts are also called high Sabbaths. And you're not supposed to do no work. Just read it. No work. No servile work, which means work that you getting paid for on your job. Right? So, you're supposed to have these days off. Now, when you knew coming into this thing... You know, you might not be able to get all these days off. And so I'm going to read it where three times out the whole year is three main feasts you got to keep. So you can definitely get three days out the whole year off from your job. See, the Lord makes it plain and simple for us. All right. Verse uh, 30. Let's see. Verse 37. These are the feasts of the Lord. Whose feasts are they? See how he shows us again. These are the feasts of the Lord. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. A burnt offering and a meat offering. A sacrifice and drink offering. Okay, we don't sacrifice animals anymore. Alright. This, 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 is, this is where the New Testament comes in. Because when Jesus died on the cross, 
you know, they, they were killing animals and whatnot. But Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. That's why he's sometimes called the sacrificial lamb. All right? No more sacrificing animals for our sins. Our own necks is on the line. And a lot of people don't, don't pay it no, no attention. A lot of people don't, don't, don't think that matters. But at Judgment Day, oh, it's going to matter. And that's a day coming soon because we are in the last days. A sacrifice and drink offers everything upon his day. Verse, uh, oh, I went too far, but I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to skip to verse 39, though. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month. See how he show us again? Also on in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Hmm. So the first day you keep a holy convocation and on the eighth day you keep a holy convocation, right? Because it is called in full title the eighth day of tabernacles as well, or as well, or tabernacles or in gathering. And just I just read, gather in the fruit of the land, gather your increase. I should be able to get to that. Verse 40, and ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. So the first day and the last day you have a holy convocation, but all the days in between that, you rejoice. You throw down, you have a party. You know what I'm saying? And this is where... Well, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Yeah, I was going to say that this is where, you know, some churches might be like, oh, they drinking and stuff over there because it's a high Sabbath. It's a feast day where you rejoice before the Lord seven days. Okay. Because cause the, the, the typical so-called quote-unquote Christian church, they, they back in my day, they would say, Smoking, drinking, and dancing is a sin. But David danced before the Lord. And King David was a man after the Lord's own heart. Right? And Jesus turned water into wine and drank wine. Alright? Smoking may not be good for you. But what were, what were mandrakes? Did they smoke them? Everything in moderation. Just had to throw that in there. Alright? Now, verse 40 says, And ye shall take you on the first day of the bowls of goodly trees. You should bring branches of palm trees. Well, nowadays we got modern technology. You don't have to cut down no trees. And like me and my wife, we were in the wilderness. You can't just go chopping down no trees. You might get a fine for that. Now you can go to the stores, you know, go to Kmart, Walmart, Venture, J.C. Penney somewhere, uh, big lots, and get you a portable tent. Because that's what the tabernacles is, is tents when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Okay? Tents. Verse, verse 41, And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Verse 42. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. That's what the ten is. A booth. And back in the old days, the children of Israel would cut down tree branches and whatnot to make these booths or tents. All right? But now we don't have to do it like that. We, we can do it easier and better now. Uh, what, what was that verse 42 again ye shall dwell in booths seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths mm. so you know you're Israelite then you start acting like one you start doing what's required of you written in these holy scriptures alright the Lord say pitch a tent and rejoice seven days 
that's what you do all right and according to uh whoever keeps the 12 new moons according to the lord's calendar this would be the second day let me see let me look oh that's october's calendar see it started yesterday at sundown actually so sundown today will be the second day so you got you got several days to rejoice all right moving on let me show you what happened in nehemiah's time turn in your bibles to nehemiah chapter 8 bear with me because i got my bible on this stand right here so i'm gonna be looking down all the time just to try something a little different nehemiah chapter 8 beginning with verse 13 Nehemiah 8, verse 13. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. Ooh, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if we all were gathered together on one accord to understand the words of the law, God's law? Wouldn't be no killing, right? Wouldn't be no stealing, right? We'd be in a utopia, a perfect world. But the world is wicked. Even, even those of us that are Israelite born don't want to hear the truth, don't want to keep the law of the Lord. And it's a shame. All right, now verse 14. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Ooh. Verse 15. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches. Ooh, these some different kind of branches, see? So it ain't got to be, you know, because you got some radicals out there. They say you only can have this certain kind. No. <laughs> olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booth as it is written mm. now this is a nehemiah time because nehemiah and them ezra and nehemiah and them they were part of the exiles they went back to rebuild after after the babylonian captivity and they found out they were supposed to be keeping these feasts just like a lot of us are waking up today. A lot of us are waking up to see, to know what we supposed to be doing as Israelites born. All right? Keeping the feast of the Lord. And what does it say? Verse 16. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, everyone upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Ephraim is another name for Israel. Verse 17. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity, that's the Babylonian captivity, made booths and sat under the booths. See? Because it's a tent. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. Ooh, that sounds familiar, don't it? Because not until these days that we are finally waking up to the truth and the whole truth for a long time, many, many years, we have not been doing this thing according to the word of God. But thank the most high. He, he allowed a remnant to be out there to teach us and show us these things to rightly divide a word of truth in the scriptures. Right? And there was very great gladness. Verse 18. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the matter. Clear. Crystal clear. 
See, all you got to do is read this thing for yourself and have a proper teacher teaching you, man, and you will be fine. All right. Now, Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16, we're going to go verse 13. Bear with me. Deuteronomy 16, verse 13. Speaking on tabernacles once again, right? Once again. All right. Deuteronomy 16 verse 13 Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days Clear, right? Crystal clear After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine What? Thy wine? Yes, because we're going to do some drinking Alright Don't get drunk And when you first coming into this thing When you first start learning about how to do it don't try to be a veteran before your time because you don't want to be sloppy drunk because this feast points to the Lord returning to set up his kingdom and then the Father returning to set up his kingdom, okay? Now, you don't want to be sloppy drunk and the Lord coming back, right? You want to you wanna maintain, all right? Corn and wine. Wow. So the Lord allows us to drink. Just don't get stuck on stupid. Verse 14. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. See? It's a party. It's a party, man. <laughs> a party for the Lord. Okay? Do they show you that in Sunday school? <laughs> no, they ain't show you that in Sunday school. <sighs> Verse 14 again And thou shalt rejoice in thy, in thy feast Thou and thy son and thy daughter And thy manservant And thy maidservant And the Levite, the stranger That's other nation And the fathers and the widow That are within thy gates Ooh, so what does that tell us? Everybody's supposed to be doing this thing Everybody Not just Israelites all those that believe so be doing it. It say even the stranger. Verse 15. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee. What you gonna do if you do this? The Lord gonna bless you. Because you are showing that you are an obedient servant to him. Right? In all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Uh oh, verse 16. Pay attention to this. Verse 16. Here's a kicker. Let me get to it because I want to show you. I want to show it to you. Uh, there we go. Verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, that's Pentecost, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Mm. So that tells us three times in a year you keep these feasts. Right? You got several feasts throughout the year. But the main ones you, you're not supposed to miss is these right here. Unleavened bread, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Tabernacles is the last feast of the year. The last high Sabbath of the year. All right? According to the Lord. According to the Most High God. According to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whose name was changed to Israel. All right? And he say what? They shall not appear before him empty. So all year long, if you made a penny, you bring that to the feast. 
you contribute, you bring something to contribute to this feast. Simple and plain, plain and simple. Now, Numbers 29. Numbers 29. And I'm going to start with verse 12, and I'm going to skip. Bear with me. Yeah, I know people like tripping. Well, if anybody come across it, because I ain't on it. <laughs> you know, people don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> it's Sunday, people watching football, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, hey, you got to do what you got to do as a servant of God. Numbers 29, verse 12. And verse 12 says, And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. And ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Now skip to verse 35. On the eighth day, ye shall have a solemn assembly. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Clear, just clarifying. What's already been read. What's already written. Alright. Second Chronicles 5. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Second Chronicles 5. Beginning with verse 1. There's King Solomon. Second Chronicles 5, be oh, beginning with verse 1. Let me put it on the screen, my bad. All right. Verse 1. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated. And the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Ooh. See what David did? David did this before before Solomon even started building the temple. He donated all this, all these pure precious metals, silver and gold, for the building of the house of God. All right, and all the okay. Verse two. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto Jerusalem. To bring up the Ark of the Covenant uh, of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Verse 3. Wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast which was in the seventh month. What 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 feast is that? Tabernacles. Now you also got atonement in, in the seventh month. Okay? You also got trumpets in the seventh month, but what's the last feast? Tabernacles. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. Verse 5, And they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites bring up. Verse 6, Also King Solomon, and all the congregation of Israel, that were assembled unto him before the ark, sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told nor numbered for multitude. Woo! Now, why do they do that? Because they got to eat, right? Back in these times, they sacrificed the animals and they ate them. This was the job of the Levites. To, to kill all these animals so everybody can have something to eat. It said what? They sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told nor numbered. That's a lot of food, man. That's a whole lot of food. And you got to have that much food for Israel. Because Israel love to eat, right? In, in, invite, invite your brothers and sisters to a Bible study. You, that's what's going to happen. You're going to hear crickets, right? <laughs> but say you're going to have some food there. Oh, Israel quick to show up. You know I ain't lying. You know I ain't lying. All right. That was verse 7. Second Chronicles 7. Go over a couple of chapters. Second Chronicles 7. Verses 8 and 10. 
Oh uh, well, I got, I got that on my paper. I'm, I'm gonna post that. It's not a misprint. It's not a typo. I'm gonna skip that for now. Go to Jer Jeremiah 33, because I want to reiterate something that a whole lot of people don't pay attention to and and really act like they don't care. Jeremiah 23. Let's see what it says. Back in Jeremiah's days. Jeremiah 23, beginning, beginning with verse 1. Now you know Jeremiah spoke for the, for, the, for the mouth of the Lord at least 10 years straight. Warning the people. The word of God. They didn't listen, right? That's why they ended up in, 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 in Nehemiah and Ezra's time. That's why they ended up in Babylonian captivity. Because they didn't listen to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Ooh, woe to who? The pastors. That's what we should say today. Because today is Sunday, right? They had a whole, they well, probably some of them still going on. They had this, you know, big old show. Ain't learning no scripture. Ain't learning what's required of us from the word of God to be humble, upright servants. <laughs> and they taking their people's money. So we'll want to who? The pastors. Verse 2, therefore thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. What they feeding them? Lies. <laughs> Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. And that what's written in the scripture? He said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. <laughs> Cause you ain't getting away. You ain't getting away. You just getting by. Verse three. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the all countries where I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Verse four. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Ooh. This truly applies today in 2023. He said he's going to set up shepherds, a.k.a. pastors, that's going to feed the people. Not just feed, not just feed them spirit, physically, but spiritually. Not just feed them food. But he said, what? they not going to be lacking. Back in my hometown in the Windy City, huh, it's gigantic congregations of people that's lacking the church ain't doing nothing for the people in the community you know what i'm saying abandoned houses abandoned buildings empty lots and you know the past is in cahoots with the with the politicians so somebody ain't doing what they supposed to be doing and somebody ain't doing their job and this ain't just in chicago it's all over America. Dilapidated buildings, ghettos, and they've been taking their tithe money to them churches every Sunday. <laughs> but the Lord said, I got a plan for y'all. I got a place for y'all, and I'm going to set up a remnant that's going to feed the people knowledge and help them. Okay? Verse 4, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Verse 5, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And what king is that? What righteous branch is that? Jesus. Because he coming back. Because you got the typical... Sunday pastors and whatnot, they'll say, oh, Jesus did it all. Well, if he did it all, why he got to come back? Common sense. Oh, my God. 
See these lying pastors? Woe unto the pastors that scatter and destroy the sheep of my pastor, said the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. And he gonna do what when he come back? Execute judgment and justice in the earth. Verse 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. Ooh! But a lot of, a lot of so-called Christians say, I'm saved now. <laughs> right? Ain't that what they say? I'm saved already. <laughs> you ain't saved because you still can die. You ain't got your spiritual body yet. You see what I mean? And this is his name which, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up and which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Verse 8. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries where I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Typical Sunday pastor ain't teaching about your heritage in this Bible. Typical Sunday pastor ain't teaching you nothing about genealogy or where you came from and where you're going to return when the Lord comes back. You got an inheritance. <laughs> Man, did your pastor tell you that? Mm -hmm. He probably did, but he said your inheritance is going to be up in heaven. But the Lord said... I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. And that's another thing. Pastors teaching these people they ain't got to do nothing no more. Mm. That's sad. Whew. Truly sad. That's why I say woe unto the pastors. Go over to Jeremiah 31. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You know I ain't lying. Jeremiah 31. Verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to skip to verse 8. Verse 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Mm. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Skip to verse 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. Where was our people scattered? All over the earth. To the four corners of the earth, right? And how we get that? In ships. But that's another lesson. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Is it well not? And with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Who was Ephraim? That's another name for Israel. The Lord said Ephraim is his firstborn. Did your pastor tell you that? That you were part of Ephraim? <laughs> that you were part of the nine, <laughs> the nine lost tribes? Because after the nine lost tribes got scattered first in 722 B.C., it was only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi left. And then they got scattered. All over the earth. So you got to find out. Well, you got to hope and pray you endure to the end. And the Lord will reveal all things. You will finally know what tribe you came out of. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't going to ain't gonna do that. If you don't make it to the wilderness. Right? Because in future days, according to prophecy written in these scriptures... You got to make it to the wilderness. Jesus tell you that in Matthew 24. You got to flee. Okay? And for those that say that fleeing is a doctrine, 
I can show you the same thing in the Old Testament. You got to get to the wilderness, which is the place of safety, also known as Psalm 91, the secret place of the Most High, where he will have his angels protecting us during the time of the Great Tribulation. All right. But that's another lesson. My bad. I, I'm getting on. I'm getting on the tangent. My bad. Okay, where was I? Skip down to verse eight. Uh, no, I read that already. Verse ten. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him. What? The Lord has almighty power. In the scriptures, it is written, They shall be taken with the hand. Because back, back in the old, old days, he would, he would have the ground open up and swallow people up and, you know, to punish them and whoop them and whatnot. But he said, no, I'm going to have these four Gentile nations whoop you until you get it right. And what, what nations were those? Babylon, the Medo-Persians. Who, who are the Medo-Persians? We know the Medes is what? Russia, right? And the Persians are Iran, right? Okay. Then you had the Greeks, and then you had the Romans. And they all persecuted our forefathers. And, <laughs> man, that's one of the reasons why we over here in America. But anyway, he said, what now? He said, I... He said, what? Well, he that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Verse 11. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Verse 12. Therefore he, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For the wheat, for wheat and for wine. See? <laughs> See? This, 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 this Bible is a complete puzzle, man. All you got to do is search it out. And it will show you things over and over again to help you get it through your thick skull. For wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and, and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a water garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Ain't that what's going on in the world with our people? We sorrow. Why? Because we are on the bottom of the totem, totem pole. We at the bottom of society. Right? Last high, first five. You know what I'm saying? Et cetera, et cetera. We, we, we do everything that we can to do right. We, we study these, these books that, that Gentiles gave us to to perform these certain uh, skills and whatnot, be overqualified for these jobs, and they still won't hire us, right? You know I ain't lying. But when the Lord returns, he going to gather his people from all these wicked, wicked places that end this wickedness. That was verse 12, right? Uh, First Kings, First Kings, Chapter Two. First Kings Two, beginning with verse ten. First Kings, Chapter Two, beginning with verse ten, ten through twelve. Verse ten. So David slept with his fathers, that means he died, and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Verse 12, Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. Okay, that, that's got to be the typo right there. Okay, so my bad on that. But at least you learn that David ruled 40 years, right? And then after him came Solomon. But when Solomon had married all those strange wives, right, who, who, who were 
daughters of paganism, the kingdom split. Okay? No more united Israel. But the Lord going to solve that in future days. So, now, Psalm 132. Psalm chapter 132. Yep. That's why, you know, you got these brothers running around talking about multiple wives and whatnot. Oh, does my memory serve me correctly? Because I ain't read it in years, but I believe Deuteronomy 17, verse 17 says, Thou shalt not multiply wives unto thyself. Right? And this was before Solomon reigned as king. Right? And what they do. Because cause one, one woman is enough, right? He had all them wives and concubines. Because <laughs> the Bible says Solomon loved many strange women. Right? Because they was into everything. Witchcraft and all kind of paganism and stuff. And turned him from the true living God. And split the nation up. Man, you know women got the power. Come on now. <laughs> you know they got that power now. Psalm 132, verse 11. Psalm 132 and verse 11. Verse 11. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Ooh, that's a big if, right? He say, if your children keep my covenant, you're going you're gonna to be reigning as kings and queens forevermore. That didn't happen, right? Is any of us ruling as kings and queens now? No, we got to go through the punishment. Hmm. Man, our forefathers, <laughs> they had it all, man. They, they had the opportunity. Oh, my God. Uh, verse 13, for the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. Where is Zion at? Over in Jerusalem, right? That's landmass on this earth. Right? Verse 14. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell. For I have desired it. Where the kingdom going to be? On this earth. So why, oh why, for hundreds of years, pastors been telling people, we going up to heaven. When the kingdom going to be down here on this earth. And you can read that in the Bible. Why they lying to y'all? Why they been lying to us, should I say? Cause 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 I was I remember hearing that lie too. Man. Where we where the kingdom gonna be? On this earth. And it's it said, the Lord desires to dwell here. That's right. He always wanted to be down here amongst his people. Zechariah 14. He always wanted to be down here amongst his people. But after a while, he said, uh-uh. Y'all doing all this wickedness. I can't be amongst y'all. He said, be holy because I am holy. That's why when he come back, he's going to clean up all the evil. Because he can't be down here with all this wickedness. <laughs> Zechariah 14. Uh, Zechariah 14. Let me get that. My bad. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever changed your life around? You know. And then. And then, you know. Well, first of all, when you change your life around. Your old cronies, your old road dogs don't want to be bothered with you no more. Been there, done that. <laughs> they all disappear. They all blow away like the wind, right? 
But if you do come across somebody that might want to be cool with you, you know, and, and and they into all the folly that you used to be into, and then you realize a light bulb go off in your mind, like, I can't keep being around this. This ain't going to do nothing but take me back to where I was delivered from. <laughs> you don't need that. The Bible say, stay clear from them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because Solomon was the, one of the, the wisest man. He he was the wisest man the earth gave. I mean, the Lord gave uh, knowledge to, right? So how couldn't he stay wise when he got all them all them uh, strange women, all them strange wives? Even he couldn't do it, right? Just, just putting common sense on the table. Zechariah 14, verse 1 through 5, and I'm going to skip. Verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. See, when the Lord returned, he ain't coming back as sweet Jesus. Because even when he was here in the flesh, <laughs> he wasn't sweet Jesus then. He was cold. But when he come back, he going to fight. And I want to get my spiritual battle. My, I'm sorry, my spiritual body to fight with the Lord, right? You know, when we was growing up, we, we all dreamed about having superpowers and stuff. This is your opportunity. This is your chance to get them superpowers, right? So you can fly like Superman. And you're going to help the Lord clean up all this evil on this planet. Man, but you got to walk this walk. You got to keep the commandments. You got to keep the Sabbath day. You got to keep the feast days. You got to keep the dietary law. And, in, and, and endure unto the end. And then you shall be saved. Right? And reign with Christ a thousand years before the Father's kingdom come down. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem. That's right. The Mount of Olives, or in the New Testament, Mount Olivet, is on this earth. That's where the kingdom going to be. All right? He said, what? The Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. What? Ain't that what I mentioned earlier? The Lord tell you in Matthew 24, for those so-called New Testamenters, that only deal with the New Testament. He tell you in the New Testament. You have to flee. And what did he say? And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. But if you ain't been keeping no commandments. You ain't been keeping no law, statutes, and commandments, no dietary law, no feast days. You ain't a saint. Not of the Lord. Skip to verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Mm. It's going to be a beautiful day, boy. Beautiful sight. All right. Uh... I didn't babble on for quite some time. Go over to Daniel chapter 7. My bad. Daniel 7. And I'm going to start with verse 13. Daniel 7. Verse 13.
verse 13. I saw in the night visions, uh, and behold, one like the Son of Man, who is that? Jesus, right? One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. Who was that? That's God the Father, right? And they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. That's right. It ain't just for Israel. It's for everybody that walked this walk. Alright? Whether you Israelite born or straight up Gentile. What does it say again? That all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that's, that which shall not be destroyed. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me i came nearer to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this so he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth that's right and i mentioned them a little while ago babylon medo persia greece and rome all right rome was the last of those Gentile dynasties, of those beasts. But it has to rise, rise one last time in these last days. It's already got power now. But it's going to rise one last time to have power from the devil. Alright? Say so these our four kings which shall arise out of there, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Uh, skip to verse 27. Let's see. Verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. What? Under the whole heaven, because there's three heavens, right? And under the whole heaven is going to be down here on this earth. That's where the kingdom going to be. So stop listening to them lies about them pastors telling you you going up there. Alright. Say, under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Revelation 20. All right, and I'm almost done. Thank you for anybody that took time out their busy schedule to listen. Because I'm just the messenger, all right? I'm just the messenger. It's, 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 a, it's amazing how the Lord opens our eyes when we read these scriptures, you know, how he always showing us stuff, always revealing stuff to us in our daily lives. When we walk by his word, when we walk by these scriptures. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. What? People going to be beheaded, getting their heads cut off? Yes. And nine times out of ten, these are the people that keep the laws of God but not going to make it to the wilderness alright cause that, 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 that head of the Roman Catholic Church who going to get his power from Satan the devil he going to force people to take a mark <laughs> the mark of the beast and it's going to be some people that's not going to take that mark because they keep the laws of God and what's going? They're going to become martyrs for Jesus. But in order to skip all that, just make it to the secret place of the Most High. He said, "When I and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God, 
and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Verse 5, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. That's what we want to make, the first resurrection, not the second. Because the second resurrection, you're going to still have your flesh body. And you got to keep your nose clean for a thousand years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's bad enough living in this flesh right now. Temptation all the time, right? Verse 6, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. See? On such the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Uh. Now this ain't in the lesson, but when you read Revelation chapter 5, it say what? Uh, Revelation 5, verse 10 says, And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Not up in the sky. Alright? Flip. 1 Corinthians 15. And one more after this. First Corinthians 15, we go in verse 24. Verse 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign to put all enemies under his feet. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalms. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. No more dying. Ain't that a beautiful thing? No more aches and pains. No more suffering. <sighs> Who don't want that? For he have put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected which did put all things on him and when all things shall be subdued unto him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things on him that God may be in all in all so the first kingdom come down is Jesus kingdom where he gonna reign on this earth for a thousand years but he got to wipe out, wipe out all the wicked. He got to get it ready for the Father's kingdom to come down. Right? Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 23. Verse 23. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. That's right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 24. And, it, and if the way be too long for thee, I'm talking about, He's talking about traveling to where the Lord choose thee or where there's a house of God that keep these feasts year by year, right? So that thou art not able to carry it or if the place be too far from thee which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee then shalt thou turn it into money and bind up the money in thy hand and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. See, that happened to me. <clears throat> now, I was living on the other side of the state line in Indiana. So I was, you know, back and forth to the church, you know, all the time. But then I ended up moving further away to Kentucky. So I would have to send, instead of doing my usual bringing bringing some, some drink or, or something to the feast, 
personally, physically, I had to convert it into money and send it because I couldn't make it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we have to do. This Bible tells us everything we need, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't believe in it. But once you start walking in this thing, the Lord will manifest Himself to you and show you things right in front of your face in your daily walk. He has every, He has all the answers in here for us. Okay. Was that the end of that? Where was I? Verse 26, And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the Lord now, not, not, no, <laughs> not no folly. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. See? Lord say you can have some, you can have some liquor. Don't let nobody tell you that. You just don't overdo it. Or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat therefore before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household. Man. So the Lord makes this makes this thing easy for us, man. Once we once we learn, once we learn from a teacher that teaches us how to uh, how to live according to these scriptures, man. Your life will get easier. He will make your plight easier. Whatever you going through, man, he will make it. He will make a way for you. It's just that simple. So, the Feast of Tabernacles points to the Lord. You, you, in the seventh month, you also have atonement, which definitely shows the Lord's return. Because that's the day he's going to return on the day of atonement, which you're supposed to have a 24-hour fast. And quiet as it's kept, I mentioned it before. The Lord gonna return on the Day of Atonement when nobody's supposed to be eating. But the Lord has a dietary law. And we know the world, the majority of the world gonna be eating a whole bunch of swine's flesh. One of the first things the Lord gonna do when he return is consume those eating swine's flesh. So I fear the Lord. And when he return, you ain't you ain't supposed to be eating anyway because you're supposed to be keeping atonement, right? Then he's going to wipe out the wicked, set up his kingdom. We're going to be rejoicing with the Lord for a thousand years. And then the Father's kingdom come down. Man. And all this takes place in the seventh month according to God. Right? So that's the end of it. I hope somebody got some understanding. Thank you for your time. Peace and blessings multiply.